Hi, this is B from Sorcery Soap, and I wanted to talk about soap dough today. Shocker. I know. That's all I ever talk about. And I um, have some ideas about it. So I wanted to show you this soap dough is from 11.4. Most of this soap dough. Some of it's a little bit newer. But some of the quality of it, and that's really what I wanted to talk about. Plus, I wanted to show you, um, let me put this over here. I wanted to show you this. So I started working with canes because there's um, a lot of different ways to put soap inside of soap. And I, uh, this weekend I watched quite a few videos on how to make actual polymer clay canes, which I found really helpful. So this is what I learned. Well, first of all, I want to show you, like, it, so my question to myself was, why would I make a cane like this when I won't be able to see it? inside the soap. For those of you who are new to the idea of embeds and soap embellishments and all that, this is soap dough and what it's, it's pliable cold process soap. So I use a particular recipe. I've cultivated 20 recipes and I have two books out uh, on just recipes, but I have four soap dough books. And so I study it and I want to share what I find um, interesting about soap dough and how to create new things so this goes inside your soap and then you pour your soap on top of it or you pour a layer and you put this and you pour another layer so that when you cut the bars gosh I should have a, a bar of soap here shouldn't I anyway I don't have one at the moment but I can put an image in so you can see the example of what an embed looks like so that the bar has a face of it two two faces of it and when you use it you have let's say a star that runs through it so you don't see this part, but you'll see the face of it. And as you use the soap, imagine this is a bar. If you use the soap, it all wears away. So um, that's one way to put uh, things inside your soap or to, to make your soaps um, interesting um, or, you know, just express a little bit of creativity. But anyway, so here's how. So if we use this, let's say this is a bar of soap that big and that this is gonna be worn away, then this is gonna be shown, right? That's gonna wear away until you get to that. And then you're gonna wear away and you're gonna to get to that color. And then let's see right here, you're gonna to get to those colors. So that's kind of interesting. That's kind of a fun thing. Plus, okay, so this I made yesterday. So it's been at least 24 hours and it's starting to cure and now you can cut it. Now, if I cut this when I first made it, it'll squish. So now it um, is firmer on the outside, but it's still actually soft on the inside. So it takes a while for soap dough to, um, I mean soap, cold process soap to uh, evaporate all the water from it. Okay, so there's that. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'm gonna get through a lot of this stuff because I want to show you how I made this um, gradation or multiple colors. So for a while, I've been making soap cookies for a long time, but I hadn't really studied this situation until most recently in this capacity. So if you see this, um, let's see, you can hear this. So this right here, I don't know. This right here is a brand new piece of saran wrap or plastic wrap because saran's just a brand name, but plastic wrap. And you can hear how crunchy some of this is. Well, that tells me that that plastic wrap is starting to break down. And if I keep it in a Ziploc baggie, I can extend the life of my soap dough. And um, like I said, this was from November 4th. So that's two months, two full months. Let's see, November, December looks like this the one i use there's lots of different extruders this one's pretty reasonably priced about ten dollars on amazon and you get um let's see here you get discs in here these are my basic discs that i use so there's a variety i separate them out and then you can buy additional discs with extenders and there's a whole host of things you can do and i have lots of videos on using the um, extruder too so just look for extruder in uh, the search option on my channel. So anyway, so if you want to extrude long canes, 
um, you'll want relatively freshly made soap dough so that it's pretty pliable like you can see that's a bit more pliable but for me I use a lot of little colors and I just need a little piece of a color sometimes I don't need a whole bunch of it so I wonder like this is the cabaret and I'm about out of the cabaret mica but I just love it it's so beautiful and so the other day I ran across this idea let me show you this might not be a good oh no here's a good one this is a good one I remember as I was doing this so this soap dough looks a little old it's gotten dried out and you can see how the white pieces are on there and so if you just break it apart like that it starts to look like garbage right I mean it looks like bad quality soap dough so here is I have a moist wa washcloth with um, water just water in it and I use it to wipe my hands oftentimes so I don't have to get up and go wash my hands and so then I have you can see how that's just it right just that very little bit of moisture starts to bring that soap dough back and it you know doing this for a pound of soap dough would be a really difficult <laughs> it would be pain but it can be done and here's the thing if you just need a little bit of a color look at that it comes right back and I was like oh my gosh I've thrown away so much soap dough because I just thought it was too much but so I just did this right a little bit and look at that it comes right back and that gave me quite a bit of hope actually I was like oh my gosh all those little pieces of color that I could have used so there you go. Plus, if I rewrap this in plastic, which I won't do right now because it makes a lot of noise, but if I rewrap this again in plastic, it'll extend the shelf life of that too. Now there's a point where you don't want to use it anymore and you'll know that point. It's just crumbly and it's just dried out way too much and you almost can't bring it back once it's to that capacity. But And I, I just wouldn't want to keep it more than a couple months just because. So once you expose it to the air all the water will evaporate and it'll become hard so now I want to show you how to how I did this okay so these are these colors let's see this one's here this one's here okay anyway so these are these colors I made these little triangles because I want to make a gradation of this and I roll I'm rolling it in plastic because I don't want to use um, cornstarch in here because even though cornstarch will help it from sticking it leaves little white marks in there and I don't get I won't get the colors that I want so it's a little bit trickier and it's going to be a little bit noisier but it's better than trying to scrape it off my worktop so then just fold it in half And there's varying ways you can do this. So I could just fold it in half and roll it out again, just like this. Depends on how many times I want to roll it. Or I could roll it up into a ball or a cylinder. Let's do it that way. That seems like a better way. So, and you don't have to make these triangles either. There's a teardrop method that you can just, let's see. Make little teardrops and flatten them out too. I just chose to make it this way because it looked neater, but I don't know if it is. So, and they start to get really long and so that's why I'm doing this I don't want it longer I want it all the colors to be close together and condensed so I'm pushing them closer together that's all I 
I don't know if these colors will work well together, but we're going to give it a try. And so here's the other thing. Soap toe doesn't behave exactly like polymer clay. So you're not going to get one for one result. Like if you, you know, if you see somebody working with polymer clay and you think, oh yeah, I can. That's why when I take something that was shown in like fondant or um, polymer clay or something like that and I put it into soap and I try to step it through, there's a series of steps that have to be translated into soap because soap doesn't behave like those materials. Nope. see how it's starting to mix together. I like the colors for sure. And of course you could do this on a larger scale so you don't have to do such a small amount like I did. I just thought this would be easier to see for some reason than a bigger amount. So one of the things they do is they take this and just fold it over a bunch of times. And however many times you do this is how um, the gradation is going to work. So how subtle the gradation. And sort of like when you pour, like you might have seen some of my pours of that. Um, I pour down the side of the mold and make a gradation so that it looks like one color moves into another color. I call it ombre sometimes, I guess. And um, uh, the more pores you do, the s more subtle that gradation is going to be. Now, the other thing that I've seen them do is just fold it over for different, because you meet the colors differently. And um, I don't have a pasta maker. Um, they make them for clay and stuff too, but that's the other thing that instead of rolling it out each time I saw them do is just different clay makers just run it through a pasta machine. And I imagine if you put it in plastic it might work okay. I don't know. So soap dough is pretty new. It's only been around, I mean it's been around for a long time but it's in our form in the way we're using it. It's only been around a few years so there's so much more that can happen with um, soap that, especially now that we're doing this kind of thing. So that's partly why I wanted to show you this. That's pretty good, huh? So it'll start to dry out. Right? So there's the cane. That side's not so pretty, but that's pretty good. I think I'll do it one more time. I don't want it 
too thin. If I could heal that cane, that inside there a bit. So another thing, if you want your soaps to be shiny, just put a little bit of water on them, makes them shiny right away, especially soap dough. Not too much, it starts to break it down. So there you go. Nice little cane, nice little gradation there. So gradation is just moving from one color to another, except that that line there, yeah, I don't like that line. Let's do this one more time. Oops. See if I get this one more time. See that line, those lines there? Yeah, I don't care for that. Let's try it again. It's just a small piece anyway. So. Yeah, that's going to be nicer, right? So if you think your soap dough is too sticky and you use a little cornstarch, that's fine. It's ideal to start with good quality the, from the very beginning. And there's some, it's just good, I'll we'll put it that way. So if you could start with the best quality soap dough you can make in the beginning, you're gonna have a lot less problems than trying to work with super sticky soap dough. And super sticky soap dough usually is because the oils were not weighed correctly. So there's oil left in it or a fragrance oil was used or something like that. And it could be the nature of the recipe that's been used as well. Um, I find this really fun. I could do this all day. I don't know what I use them all for. I could put them in soaps, I suppose, right? But, um, here, let's do this side. Yeah, I'll do that. And so at the end, look at how much soap dough I've used. Not very much at all. And I'm not very, I'm not super proficient at this. I've, you know, done it a handful of times, but I just wanted to see what the possibilities were. So a little bit, see, just a little bit, and then look how much better that looks right away. See if we can heal that. And now it won't matter. And it doesn't have to be perfect either. That's the other thing. As far as like, if you're doing canes and polymer clay and you want you want to display the gradation, yeah, they definitely have to be perfect. Well, more perfect, we'll put it that way. But that's exactly what you're showing. This, as long as there's no holes in the inside of it. So this is what somebody's gonna see on a bar of soap when you cut into it, they're gonna see that. Now this one isn't a nice smooth gradation at all, but I wanted to see what happened when I extruded it. So I put this in and extruded the whole thing. So here's another tip. If you want this to come out of your extruder nice and smooth, paint a little water on it. And I mean just a little bit. So here, this is water and this is a brush and you just paint a little bit of water on it right you can see it's not sloppy wet it's just a little bit right there okay and then stick it inside your extruder and it'll come out a lot smoother and i just learned that this weekend which you'd think i'd already know that but anyway it helps a lot because i i know some um like uh 
extrusion like this one has really sharp edges and so if it's dry it gets hung up on that and starts to crack it and so this even cracked a bit and I did paint it on here but I really you know I was working with this quite a bit so anyway I hope that helps and I hope that makes you see soap dough just a little bit differently so thanks for watching and happy new year